Now, there's a dynamic that's taking place with environmental risk transmission in that the traditional risk that was being seen with air pollution, which was solid fuels for cooking, has gone down with modernization, but instead we're seeing a modern risk go up. And so this is continuing uh, to add to the spread of disease whatever you define as disease. And Tim Brewer says, well, some of that's infectious diseases. And he gave this report uh, showing that in the last uh, 10 years or so, 398 WHO reported infectious disease outbreaks have been, re have been re officially reported. And that these, uh, the reporting of these is getting better, but not fast enough. Uh, and that society as a whole is at risk as this one health or zoonoses to human health uh, starts to increase because of the changes in environment and so forth. So my other charge was how do we take technology and move it into the health field. And M Health is a huge field now that I'm still starting to learn about. And there was a great presentation on the use of mobile phones to collect outcome data in rural uh, Africa and elsewhere. There were discussions, and I can't go into the details, I apologize, but I was forewarned I only had 10 minutes, and this is ridiculous. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I had the highlight. Uh, that another set of symposia were addressed too, in fact, on the health of women, mothers and children. And you know the Global Health Initiative is health, uh, uh, mother and uh, female gender uh, oriented uh, and is uh, trying to address the catastrophe. That's well described by uh, Keith Martin in his presentation. Uh, and these numbers speak for themselves. 8.8 .8 million children dying uh, each year. Uh, and I could go into more detail on how everyone's addressing this in a slightly different way. And we're learning for how the people in Kenya are addressing it compared to the people in Zimbabwe, compared to the people in South Africa. There's no uniformity. Uh, it's heterogeneous, but we learn from that heterogeneity. And what might fit for one culture could fit another culture, or it may not. Uh, and so the purpose of these was to learn from each other, to discuss those changes. And uh, Nancy Glass talked about what she's doing working with microeconomies in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Most of you know about this huge problem of genocide, removal of the dictator, the mineral wealth of, of Uganda, the, entre, uh, the um, issues of insecurity that's taking place there uh, in the various armed groups that are roaming this country that is just lawlessness and creating to conflict uh, throughout. And so she's gone in there to try and develop strategies that reintegrate survivors to the family and the community. And it's access to testing and treatment for HIV, STDs, uh, other types of problems of rape, mediation for the families for reintegration, and increasing economic productivity to rebuild uh, family and community. An enormous effort that's taking place that we are learning how to apply microeconomies to address the inequities uh, in health. Lastly, yeah, you'd be glad. Uh, I'm going to close. You know, we hear from the Gates Foundation. We're here in Seattle. They're down the road um, about their grand challenges, and I applaud. I believe me, I applaud them. Um, but we said there's a grander challenge, and that grander challenge is to really build health systems that change the impact for the population to improve their health so that health can be felt everywhere. It's not always get the best technology and get an immediate outcome. Sometimes it takes time and you need to build these systems. We need their help uh, to do that. We need to share that with everyone. And uh, in one experimental uh, uh, effort to do that, uh, David Peters, who I borrowed his slide, actually showed that if you do a, um, uh, an intervention 
uh, in which you provide an incentive to pregnant women to come in and have safe deliveries, you can markedly increase that. And it was done through an educational system uh, of health uh, professionals working with community health professionals uh, that was uh, enormous and is saving lives. So what's the future? So the future is aim high and aim far for technologies. Here is my summary. I just wrote it uh, because my predecessor has really got me thinking. First, form multidisciplinary teams. We heard about teamwork to solve complex problems. The health professionals working with social scientists, engineers, economists, lawyers, environmental specialists, ethical specialists, all working together to solve these complex problems of global health. Second, utilize cost-effective and innovative technologies um, that are point of care, if, uh, if possible, to address the problems for diagnosis, surveillance, and treatment, and for prevention. Form equal partnerships to collaborate everywhere. And that's not just north-south, south-north, it's south-to-south. South. And again, remember that it, there's no uh, real formula, it is the people that form those partnerships. And finally, incorporate uh, university students at every single level in the decision-making process. They are the ones helping drive this agenda. They are the future generation. They have the new ideas and we can learn from them and put them into practice uh, faster uh, if we listen to them and incorporate them. And so together, really, we can make an enormous difference uh, by working together. Thank you very much.